This is a Chapman uh, FM1000 tuner, um, circa I would say probably 1963-64 maybe. Um, Chapman um, made a f a quite a range of uh, tuners and uh, receivers back in the 60s and uh, it used to be uh, ad joined with a company called Deritron uh, and Deritron uh, do a lot of uh, environmental test equipment for um, vibration uh, uh, controllers and uh, amplifiers and things like that. Um, this tuner was bought as a ongoing repair um, and didn't work at all when I switched it on. It was totally dead, um, no audio at all. Now it uh, uses the um, the AF117 uh, or the AF11 series anyway uh, transistors, as you can see here. We've got an, a range of different uh, transistors in here for the. Uh, RF and IF amplifiers. Um, two of these AF116s had a uh, junction to uh, case shorts, um, so I had to clear those. I've basically just taken all the transistors out, removed them, uh, zapped the shorts uh, with a high voltage uh, supply, um, and disconnected the shield. It's also always a good idea to disconnect the screens on these transistors. It makes little difference to the performance of the transistor. Um, it just means that you're more likely to have a transistor fail prematurely if you've got the ground connected and the whiskers grow back. This AF115 was totally um, short um, and I replaced that. This, this is the uh, the mixer um, transistor. This is the, the transistor that basically takes the local oscillator and the incoming uh, RF signal um, and heterodynes it. This is where the super heterodyne bit comes in and it converts it to the 10.7 MHz IF which is amplified by these two, um, uh, two th three stage IF amplifier first, second, third stage as a discriminator. So it's a very very basic layout it, and it's actually quite nice to sort of see how it all works because um, because it's um, laid out in this way it's basically in and out here and it's sort of it's in a nice clean sweep, so you've got the aerial lead coming in here, you've got the uh, 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 inductor, variable inductor here for a uh, low frequency matching of the aerial and the, the trimmer, sort of like the Plessy trimmer capacitor here for the high frequency end. So this basically gangs this, this to this tuning uh, gang here and these two here which is the local oscillator coil which is this one. Uh, an oscillator trimmer for the high frequency is that one, so basically those two gang to that one, these two gang to that, so this is how you match the RF uh, front end to get the maximum performance out of the, uh, of the of the set. So as I say, I replaced that transistor and cleared two shorts. Um, everything on the power supply looks absolutely fine. Uh, I've had to uh, clean up and uh, uh, lubricate the variable capacitor because that was very noisy. Um, and was uh, awkward to awkward to uh, get apart and clean, but I managed to clean it up, and it's all nice and free now. Um, the nice thing about it was because I had to obviously take the board out of the set to uh, to check or, and unsolder the transistors. I thought well, I'm going to have to disconnect the uh, the tuning gang, as you can see here. If I take this off, it's all attached. But it, what it actually does is it will it sits in a little key in the front panel, so you can remove these two screws here. And the uh, leave the tuning uh, drum behind, which is great. So it's all in in the correct place. So when you once you've finished with the uh, rep the repairs, you can slide it back in and just slide the shaft back over, and it's you know you haven't got to do a restring. Even though the restring is very straightforward on the set, um, it's still a bit of a pain. So yeah, as I say, I've basically done the uh, uh, replacement of the, a couple of the, uh, trans the this transistor here and cleared the shorts. Um, I've done an RF alignment um, and I haven't touched the IF because this, the set sounds so good I, I'm reluctant to touch anything. And shouldn't, nothing should really need to be adjusted. I mean I might have slightly affected the capacitance of the, uh, of the uh, tank circuits by removing the screens of these transistors but, but I doubt it's uh, really made a lot of difference to be honest with you. So. Um, I'll give you a quick demonstration of the, of the tuner. Um, it's really nice actually, it's got a nice sound to it. Um, it gives you such a basic layout, it's pretty sensitive as well. 
we're just running on a length of wire. Um, if you can see here, there was an aerial socket that had uh, corroded away here, so that will need replacing. Uh, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, it's a nice looking set. It's sort of got like a slightly sort of Flash Gordon retro style to it. Um, it does have an option by the looks of it for a uh, multiplex decoder out or a, a, a signal so you can feed into a stereo decoder. Um, and what I'm doing, because it's only a mono uh, front end, or it's only a mono tuner, it's only got one output. So what I'm doing at the moment is I'm just jumping this, this output to this spare. Um, it's another phono output for the multiplex decoder, which usually has a link from this board here to there that hasn't been fitted on this. So I'm just connecting across for the time being, so I've got audio on both channels. Just makes it a bit less one-sided to listen to when I'm listening to the workshop. Um, so let's uh, turn it on and you can have a quick listen to what you think. No audio. Good start. So why have we got no audio? Shorting out. Yeah. Okay, so let's start at the so the normal thing is for some reason they Chapman tuners seem to start the low frequency to the right and the high frequency to the other end. So let's scan through and see what we can hear. It's been a tremendous evening, thank you very much. I can't believe that the time has flew again. I, I, I really genuinely can't believe. And then that great revolution happened of naturalistic acting. I, I, I just started to think what in 50 years time people will make of today's well, that's, look, that, that, that's I wish there had been a, a specific point about that, that filming any performance of Shakespeare is a problem because you are capturing a, a certain kind of stage performance. Saving up for a trip. So as you can hear, it's um, it's, it's pretty sensitive, really, um, considering its basic layout. Um, it's a nice tuner. Um, very pleased with it. I'm going to put the cover back on it and. Uh, there's a bit of paint touching up maybe on the side here, but that will probably a lot of that will just actually got this just sort of like paints rubbed off on something. But um, yeah, that's the Chapman uh, FM100 or what FM1000. And uh, thanks for watching. I'm going to keep an eye out for some more of these because um, there's there's a number of other tuners they do. I've actually got a uh, another Chapman tuner that. Uh, I've got in the back of the workshop that needs restringing, and I've had it for a while, and I've never got round to uh, restringing it. So maybe I should get my bum into gear and get that sorted out because that's actually a nice, that's actually a receiver. I think that is a, so long ago, and it's right at the back of the workshop. But no, I'm looking at it now. As you know, it's um, it is a, it's a receiver. So I'll have to sort that one out as well. But uh, yeah, nice, nice little tuner. Anyway, thanks for watching.